Let's talk about successful selling. Let's talk in particular about your point of sale. And like with the writing great copy, I'm going to ask you to remember 12 things to have a successful st sales strategy. Successful sales strategy. A successful, sa successful sales strategy. Okay, let's start off with the most important first thing. First impressions matter. They're very important. Fresh coat of paint, organize the place, get rid of the junk outside, make it look as though you're in business. Get rid of loose stuff, make sure there's no dust and dirt. If you're running a, a, a workshop, make sure there's no junk outside, that all the bins around the back where people can't see them, that sort of thing. Make sure that you look like a workshop and not a junkyard. So that's number one. Number two, no stupid rules. hedge fund trader thing acquaintance of mine was cycling home somewhere in north uh, northwest london and he went dropped in to a wedding planner's showroom uh, with his bicycle and he brought the bicycle inside the wedding planner's showroom and the woman there asked him to take his bicycle outside and she got quite sniffy about having a bicycle inside her showroom. So he said, told me, I took my bicycle outside and I took myself outside and I didn't go back and we used somebody else. The same thing with banks. They ask for utility bills. They have credit checks. They can verify passports and driving licenses. They have access to the electoral register. But no, they want to see if you paid your gas bill. So that's number two. Stupid rules put people off. So don't have any. Number three, smile, stand, greet the customer. Don't ignore them. Be friendly. Hello. Don't say, can I help you? How many times have I gone into some shop or showroom or something and some dweeb comes up to me and says, can I help you? I don't. Number four, say yes to everything. If they ask for that car in pink, say yes. Don't say, well, I'm afraid they don't do it in pink. So yes, you can get it resprayed. They want it in pink, give it to them in pink. Who cares? They want it in pink. I'm afraid we don't do pink. They can have it covered in pink vinyl or they can have it resprayed. Say yes to everything. And if you as a salesman can't say yes, then the sales manager can say yes. And if the sales manager can't say yes, because it's just too wacky for him to say yes, then the branch manager or the company owner or somebody who's in a position to say yes, never say no. Because if you say no, they'll say, oh, and then they're gone out the door. Actually, I'm pointing at a brick wall, doors that way. Number six, kids, dogs, aardvarks, pet ferret, mice, whatever it is, bicycles, are welcome. Kids come in, give them toys to play with, give them colouring books. Perhaps it's a good idea to have a company-sponsored four-page little colouring book. Number seven, so we're now into 
grand openings. If you're opening a new branch or if you're opening your business for the first time or anything like that, have a grand opening. so that people feel there's an event and give them money off for the first 10 minutes, 20 minutes, day, whatever applies. Number eight, however, five, six, seven, eight. Number eight, once a year, or perhaps more often, but depending on the scale of your business and how it's structured and all the other things, once a year, a public relations event. Once a year, do something that grabs headlines. Just in the past few days, we have had Taylor Swift giving a girl who was a refugee from somewhere, had only been in Britain for four right. years. So she needed 40,000 pounds and she raised 17, but she needed another 23,000 in order to get a place at Warwick University to study mathematics. Taylor Swift, with days to spare, gave her the 23,000 and Taylor Swift got press coverage around the world thanks to that. She got more than a 23,000 pounds worth of press coverage. In 1850, uh, the Swedish nightingale, a soprano called Jenny Lind, was going to tour America so she, to raise money for charity and she got in contact with publicist, circus owner, and theater owner, P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum's building on Broadway was next to a hatter called Janine. And Barnum said to him, you know, um, I will be auctioning off the best seats in the house for the very first concert. It would probably do you a lot of good if you were to buy the best seat in the house. And I'll get the auctioneer to ask for your name and you say it out loud and clear so that everybody can hear. But then the auctioneer called out and said, and who is the bidder? And he said, Janine the Hatter. And that went into all the newspapers and right across America, everybody wanted to have Janine's hats. Number nine. Kaizen. Every day in every way I'm getting better and better. Well, improve your sales the same way. Improve everything every day. Every day look at the way the sale is structured and make it a bit better. Look at every aspect of that sale. Is there something we're doing that could be a little bit smoother, a bit more encouraging for the customer? Okay, that was number nine. Number 10, your staff are part of your brand. They're important to your brand. They're the front liners. They're the foot soldiers. Make them aware of their role in the point of sale. Include them in the structure of your rules, your plans, be inclusive. Ask them, how can I improve the way we're selling? Important, that was number 10, number 11, right? Fixing a customer's problems makes them appreciate your company even more. I bought some cheap tool from Lidl and I phoned up Lidl and said, my cordless thing has stopped working. 
And I was put through to Germany where a very pleasant young man said, we will send you a new one. Uh, what do I do with the old one? He said, put it in the bin. And I got a completely new one with all the parts and accessories that came with the original. So fixing a customer's problem makes them appreciate your company even more. A customer where something's gone wrong and you fixed it, just like that, means that they're going to trust you more than if nothing ever went wrong. And number 12, last but not least, evaluate your customers and target the most profitable ones. Really hone in on them. A long time ago, I did some work at RTL Television, Radio Television Luxembourg, okay? And uh, they became, at the time, they just broadcast to, I think, Rheinland-Pfalz and um, bits of uh, Rhein uh, Westphal and some, somewhere like that. Trier, Cologne, the, that area there. And they had a young go-getter graduate marketing chap called Conrad, and he divided up their customers for the first time in Germany. I mean, I know it's happened in Britain and in America and all sorts of other places, but it had never been done in Germany, of course, because private television at the time was brand new. And so for the first time, he divided up the customers into 16 groups, ranging from the ones that advertisers want the most to the ones they want the least, and the most profitable of those customers. Do the same. Really target your customers. Look at the way they buy. Are they buying in bulk? Are they buying wholesale? Deal with them different. Differentiate between your customers and target the ones that are profitable. That's very important. <laughs>